Hello everybody, welcome to this Verbling class. My name is Teach Amy and today's class is um, all about animals. So if you're an animal lover, then you might find this class a bit of fun. We're going to look at a little bit of an article um, about a Canadian um, who's, who worked for the protection of animals. In, actually, I'm not sure if he was a Canadian, but he certainly worked in Canada for the protection of some of the wild species over there. Um, and I thought it was an interesting topic because I think, you know, some of, some of the countries that we come from do have special types of species that are uh, maybe only found in our areas or countries or at least um, quite rare. So have a little think about those kind of animals. Is there anything particular to your country that is interesting that um, you could share with us that maybe some people from other places wouldn't know about? or maybe they do know about but don't know very much about. Um, so we're going to be reading the article and talking a little bit about endangered species, national parks and the protection of animals. So if you, uh, while we wait for everybody to join us, um, if you haven't ever visited a Verbling teacher teacher page, then you might like to do that at some point just to find out a bit more about who we are on Verbling. And if you do want to book a private session with any of us, then that's where you can do it from. So you can watch our introductory videos. Um, you can also check out our class schedules and timetables. You can ask us a question. You can read reviews from previous student classes um, and everything, all the info that you need to know in order to join us on Verbling should be found there. So do go ahead and check those out if you're a Facebook person then you might be interested in having a look at um, a Facebook page from one of the teachers also. And if you're interested in that, have a look in the Google chat. That's posted for you there. All right, wonderful. So we're going to start off by um, just finding out who we've got, where we're from, and how interested we are in animals. So let's say hello to Martin. How are you, Martin? I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm well, thank you. Lovely to see you. Tell yeah. us about animals. Do you care about animals, Martin, really, or not so much? Yes, yes, yes I do. But in Denmark, we do not have a wildlife of these uh, type like bears. Mm -hmm. Foxes would be the top uh, apex uh, uh, animal here. Mm -hmm. And a few wolves have been spotted in Jotland, one or two. And indeed, there are people who think they should be uh, kept there. And in the EU, the wolves are uh, safe. You're not supposed to, to shoot them. Yep. And I find it's quite strange to think about uh, wolves roaming around in Denmark, I must admit. Absolutely. So is that something new, or have they always been a, a part of your... Well, it's, it's quite new. I think they have, in the old days, 100 years ago, they were there. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I think it's in the last five years I've been talked about them, and two or three years ago they were spotted. Uh, one or two were spotted in Jutland. Wow! So is that that must be sort of in the more agricultural or countryside area? It, it is, yes. And they, but do people live there around there still? They do, I think. Yes. Or uh, no, no areas in Denmark where nobody is living. Mm -hmm. So. Sheep farmers are not very happy with it. <laughs> they come from Germany, I think. Okay. Germany and Poland and Russia, they have lots of them. So yeah. it's quite easy for wolves to, to, get, to uh, run into Denmark, I'm afraid. Yeah, for sure. That's um, interesting. So they are technically protected, you say. You're not they supposed are, to are. shoot them. No, you're not supposed to shoot them. But what happens I, if you I, do? Is, there a seri is it serious or...? Well, you might, if somebody found out, you might get a fine. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think anybody would talk about it <laughs> if, <laughs> if it happened. I know, I've heard it's the same in, I think in Sweden where they have several animals, but in the north of Sweden, but in the middle of Sweden, in Värmland, they've had a few incidents with wolves. Okay. And one of them have been shot some five years ago. The, one of those was shot, and there was quite a lot of discussion in Sweden about it. Okay. Because some people care for the wolves, and most of the Swedes, I think, would rather don't have them in areas where they live. Would rather not have them. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, actually, interesting one to bring up straight away, Martin, because I think for some reason the wolf, a particular animal, is quite controversial. Um, it seems to be like you either kind of love them or you hate them, and there's not much in between. It seems like wherever they are, there's always a struggle between the people who, you know, are farming or whatever and the people who think they should be protected. So interesting that you have that problem in Denmark. Not a big problem, I imagine, but still. Oh, no, no it, 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 we have some discussion about it. Yeah, sure. All right, wonderful. Thanks for starting us off. So we've got foxes and wolves in Denmark. Let's see um, what Natasha has to say. Hello, Natasha. How are you? Hello, Amy. Hello, guys. I am so, uh, fine. Thank you for asking. What about you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Uh. So, Natasha, tell us about um, animals. Are you an animal person? Uh, no, I can't say that uh, it's uh, my cup of tea, but uh, I know <laughs> yes. But I know that uh, Belarus uh, is uh, uh, well known uh, by the, our um, our uh, unique animals. Uh, I think so. It's orcs, uh, and if I am not mistaken, uh, this kind of animals uh, exist only in uh, our country nowadays. Um, uh, I might be wrong, but I suppose uh, that uh, it's a really uh, very uh, very small uh, number of these animals, and uh, nowadays uh, they are uh, living in uh, our national park, Belovesh uh, 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 Only there they are living, and uh, uh, they are really very strong and uh, big animals, and uh, they are exist uh, there uh, through years, uh, uh, maybe. A very very long time ago, they uh, started living there, and uh, uh, our government uh, tried to uh, survey and protect them. Uh, but I I I am really not exactly. But I think that uh, we uh, can't uh, to increase the number in our national park. That was a really beautiful explanation, Natasha, but I missed the animal that you said. What animal were you talking about? Okay, uh, maybe I, I'll write now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure if you said oh, hawks, yeah. but it wasn't hawks, right? Because it was Orc. not a bird. Orc. It's Orc. Can you orcs? That sounds like it's uh, from Lord of the Rings. It can't be that because I know they're imaginary. <laughs> Could you type it? Oh, oh my gosh! Yes, yes. Uh, maybe so. Ah, oh, okay. Yes. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah. What are they? What are they, yeah. Natasha? I don't know what they are. Uh, it's it's maybe the same with bison, maybe so. Ah, it's the okay. Same yeah. of the yeah. Okay. okay, awesome. That is very cool. I'm just gonna show a picture because this is definitely not an animal I was very familiar with. Um, so there you go. They're like huge kind of bison type things with massive horns. And if you wow, if you check out there, they've got the context of two men, so they're absolutely enormous. Have you ever seen one, Natasha, yourself? Are you still there, Natasha? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, um, it's dropping in and out a little bit. Yeah. Have you ever seen oh. one of these animals yourself? Yes, yes, I have had that experience in my life uh, when I uh, were in our national park. It was uh, uh, only once uh, uh -huh. I, I saw them. It was uh, very impressive, impressed for me. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that's amazing. All right, yeah. what a fascinating yeah. animal. Thank you, Natasha. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Um, it's really nice to know that you're doing something about protecting them as well. Um, I always feel hope, hopeful with that kind of news, so that's great. Oh, 
Okay, let's get back to Raphael, who's just joined us, so don't miss him out. Hello, Raphael, how are you? Oh, you're very quiet. Can you speak up a bit? Hello? 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 That's a bit better. Seems like the sound's a little bit funny. Um, we've been talking about animals, Raphael. Are you, do you like animals? I think you have a dog. I have two dogs, actually. Two, that's and, right. And, yes, I like animals. Um, why did you choose to have two dogs? No, actually it's three, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that I have chosen them. Uh, I, I believe they have chosen me because um, I found them in the street and I took care of them. Aww. So just uh, start giving food and medicine and I think uh, they now I, I cannot get rid of them so because I, <laughs> I have feelings for them so do they live inside your house or do they just visit you no they live they live outside but sometimes they have to to come in when it's rainy and when it's a lot of uh, thunders and they are afraid of thunders and other oh. explosions <laughs> so I have to, to bring you exactly, but uh, it's part. Of it. yeah. That's awesome. Do you take them for walks, Raphael, or do they just run around? Sometimes I take them for a walk, but um, the, it's not something I usually do because I don't have enough time. But um, especially on weekends, when I have some free time, especially in mornings, I I take them out a little bit, and. But it's they are some they are kind of big, so it's some it's some it's a little bit difficult to handle three dogs in a <laughs> in a street. It's kind of funny. But anyway, I can imagine it actually just them running around and dog personalities are so enthusiastic and uh, energetic exactly. that um, <laughs> if you have a small house, it can be a little challenging. But still, it sounds like fun, and that's awesome that you rescued them from the street. You are protecting animals in your own right, Raphael. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right, awesome. Lovely to see you. Welcome. Okay, Xenia. Hello. You were here first today, I think. Welcome. Hello, yes. Are you an animal person? <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay, why do you say <laughs> that? <laughs> Um, because I love them a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you have any of your own, or that you look after? Nowadays, no, I don't have. But when I lived with my parents in our own house, I had a lot of animal. Actually, in one time, I had about twenty dogs. Oh my so, gosh, twenty! Yes. Oh my god, yes, it was very difficult to feed them. It was crazy, but hmm, it was it, I think. It was worth it. What, where it were all of these 20 dogs? Did your parents have like a big garden or live on a farm or anything? We have, yes, big garden. So it was also two girls' dog, two girl dog from street. And actually they were pregnant. Both of them have had eight puppies. Oh, oh, so. I see. <laughs> this is how you got so many. Yes. <laughs> um, there's a Disney movie that I once watched when I was babysitting about, I think it was called The Dog Hotel, and uh, it makes me think of that, Ksenia. All of these dogs running around, um, but it was quite a funny movie, actually. So, Okay, so now you don't have, do you have any pets at all? No, they all died actually, and I don't want any because it's very stressful for me when they are ill or died. Okay, yeah, it's upsetting. It's like losing a member of the family, really. Yes. So, um, okay, so you've chosen to to have a time without pets. What about the the animals generally in your country? Are there any? particularly interesting ones or endangered ones or anything that you know about? Mm, yes, we have a lot of endangered in endangered animal or endangered endangered, endangered animal. It's uh, like Siberian tiger, Siberian leopard, Siberian wolf. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and all from Siberia. <laughs> yes. And they're all of the endangered animals are Siberian something or others. Yes. Why is that? Why is that, Ksenia? Is it for ha because of hunting or the weather or? Because of hunting years and uh, this the Siberia is close to China and I think Chinese people love to kill this animal and okay. Russian too, but Chinese uh, did it a lot actually. Okay, so that's an interference from a neighboring country. Um, I know that Chinese do have a bit of a reputation for including some of these animals' parts in their medicine and things like that. Um, yes, so yes. maybe that has to do with it. But, oh, I hate the idea of that. It's terrible. Um, but, wow, so very kind of um, unique animals because they only, I believe, they're only living in that particular part of the world. If they're Siberian tigers, then you can only find them in Siberia, one would assume. Mm, yes, and it, I think it's uh, about 10 items of tigers, so there are a lot of them, or a, a small amount, yes, or only 10 or mm, less, I don't know, about On, 10. So about 10 individual tigers? Yes, in wow. all world, maybe. That's but really, not really sure. scary. All right. Well, if anyone wants to do some research on Siberian tigers, this could be one to look up. Um, thank you, Ksenia. I must say, tigers are definitely one of the coolest animals, I think. I don't know why I like them, but they're just awesome. Yes. All right. Um, welcome. Let's talk to Julian. Julian, are you an animal person? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Not okay. really now. Not really now. Because so that's... Okay. Yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh, yes, I I have a, I had a, a pet in, in the past, but always don't no was because I like it. it. Was because my mother or my sister or my my brother uh, ha, uh, like it to 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 get a a pet, and I and finish. I take care of the pets. No, I don't like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you ended up taking care of the pet, even though you didn't really like having a pet. Uh, no, I I like it, but uh, now I don't have the uh, enough time, uh, yeah. a space, sorry, mm -hmm. to 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 take a a, a pet in, in in the right way. Maybe uh -huh. a dog because I, I live in a in a small uh, floor, and I think that the that the pet the pets like a human need a, a space to live. We, yeah. we don't put in them like a, a a jail or in in a small places because our animals. Yeah. And maybe I think that they stress by this situation, and they they get we, stressed. They get okay. They get stressed. May, maybe when I buy my my dream house, I will get a pet. <laughs> I love it, Julian. <laughs> when I buy my dream house, are you saving for your dream house? Yes, I am saving Great. now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so that's fair enough, and I think you raise a good point that. Sometimes, you know, um, if you do want to have a pet, you need to allow the space and the time and also maybe, you know, the ability to spend time with it because sometimes we had a dog living next door to us and the owners would go out all day and then it would bark and you could tell it was lonely. It's kind of sad. So, good point. Okay, what about um, animals in your country, Julian? Are there any, like, amazingly unusual animals or endangered animals or anything? Yes, we have a lot of amazing, awesome animals because we are, we take uh, a part of the forest rain, the rainforest of Amazonas and yep. you could have uh, anacondas, um, crocodiles and... Crocodiles. Crocodiles. And, in English, no, 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 it's not crocodiles, it's crocodiles. Okay, the R crocodiles? comes first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. Sorry. 
Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, that's a little Spanishy thing. Um, yeah. Personally, I think the Spanish word is much better. <laughs> but anyway, we're in an English class, so it's crocodiles. Crocodiles and uh, bigger spiders and and bigger is more than fifteen centimeters. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> Remind yeah. me to never come to Colombia, Julian. <laughs> No, it's far away from here. Okay, <laughs> it's far away. In <laughs> right. um, okay, so yeah, I mean, with the Amazon rainforest, there's probably more animals than you could possibly say. There's just millions of them, which is really amazing. Yes. Um, do you have, I think I once saw something about an, a snake-infested island <laughs> near Colombia. Do you know anything about this, Julian? <laughs> It, sorry, infested what? <laughs> it was a snake-infested island, which means an island full of snakes. Uh, no, I don't know. No. no. Okay. No, um, I know the 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 monkey-infested island. <laughs> a monkey-infested island. Yes, it's oh, in Amazonas. Oh, really? <laughs> so, uh, what is it like? Is it just full of monkeys everywhere? Yes, it's a it's a, a different kind of monkeys. Um, you, it's it's an island in in the center of the Amazons, near to the to the light border with Brazil. Yeah. Um, you when you when you stay in this in this in this island, the monkeys uh, stay with you, play with you, <laughs> and so and but it's maybe uh, I don't know maybe. 300, 400 monkeys in, in, in the in the island. Maybe more. Maybe oh, more. Wow. Yes. All right. That's that's and amazing. You can touch. Yes, and you can touch it, touch hit them, mm -hmm. and I don't say that they they um, cling by 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 your body. I don't say that. Yeah. yeah they cling to you. Ah. Yeah, cling him and I hug you and whatever other things. Wow! It's amazing. It's amazing trip that. That sounds really um kind of fun if you like monkeys. Yes. <laughs> um, so maybe we should adjust it, Julian, because if you use the word infested, it's not very nice. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a negative thing, right? If your kitchen is infested with cockroaches, well, you can imagine. So we wouldn't say a monkey infested island unless if unless the monkeys oh. were a problem. Okay. Okay. So maybe just an island full of monkeys. That's better. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. This is really fascinating finding out about all these different things. Jose, your turn. How are you today? Yes, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking, Amy. And you? Pardon? Oh, good. I'm good, thank you. Um, so, Jose, okay. do you have any pets? No, I don't have any pet because I live in, in a flat and I think uh, it, it is not a hygienic uh, to have a pet in, in a flat because um, the pets is, is split out uh, some smell. But uh, <laughs> before, when I lived with my parents, um, my parents um, have always had a pet in their house. Now I live in, in Valencia. Valencia is a big city, and the only way that uh, I I that I have uh, to to look the the animals in the wild, well, in the wild, no, in a place is to, to go to the to the zoo. Is the, <laughs> the only the, the only way. Yes. Uh, sometimes I I watch on TV. Uh, a big channel about animals. Uh, the name is National Geographic. Yeah. I think it's the best it's the best channel about animals because Absolutely. because uh, yes uh, this this uh, this channel is all all the times uh, all, all the times talking about uh, animals. Yeah, I think, sure. Um, I enjoy I enjoy watching. Uh, watching uh, this, this program on the TV. 
Um, I, I, I feel upset uh, too uh, about the uh, about the hunters because I don't understand how the hunters enjoy killing animals. Uh, I don't understand it. No, I must admit, no. I don't either, Jose. I find that quite difficult to understand. Yeah. I think I can understand it, you yeah. know, if it's if yeah. they're going to eat the animal and it's sometimes I guess it's a traditional way of living that people want to keep alive but when it's damaging the species and the animals are dying out and or they sell it yeah. just for one part of its yeah. body and then it's kind of sad yeah, so it sounds it sounds, <laughs> it sounds as something. if yeah. Yeah. Um, so you enjoy watching animals from afar but you don't have any close contact at the moment Jose no, you just, no. Just watch them on it's the TV. In my country, it's uh, it, it's not not possible. Yes, only on the TV. All right, awesome. Um, well, if you get animal fever, sounds like you're gonna have to go to Colombia or Brazil or something. You'll, or if you want to see one of those very cool auroras, yes. go over to visit Natasha. <laughs> it's not so far away. All right, lovely to have you, Jose. Let us say hi to Estella. How are you today? Hi, Amy. I'm fine. And you? I'm great, thank you, Estella. So tell us about you. Do you have any pets? Are you an animal person? Yes, I have two dogs and a rabbit. Ah! How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I have it. It's a small one. It's called uh, like teddy teddy bears. <laughs> because it has uh, a lot of hair. hair. <laughs> fur. A lot of fur. No, I mean hair. Oh, actual hair. Yes, yes. Oh wow. Okay. Um, and how do how do you stop your dogs from eating your rabbit? <laughs> because the the rabbit it's in a it's not a jail but it's a special cage. box a cage. A cage. Yes. So, but normally they get on well together. Ah, that's quite yes. awesome. Yes. So um, the dogs don't mind having the rabbit around. No, they all play together. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Because <laughs> yes. usually, you know, dogs and rabbits, there's only one kind of relationship: the rabbit runs and the dog chases, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But in my case, no, they are friendly. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right, so. Um, what about animals in your country, Estella? Can you tell us about anything interesting there? Yes, well, we have uh, some animals in uh, risk of extinction. At risk. Uh, okay, such as the lynx mm -hmm. and uh, the imperial eagle. Wow. Yes. So I think it's also uh, for due to the, for the hunters because they like to. I don't know to hunt them for, for I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe for but, a prize because they're yes. oppressive. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also the brown bear, or mm -hmm. bear, sorry, the brown bear. Uh, so they are all all in in extin in extinction. They're all endangered. Endangered. If, okay, yeah. Endangered. If they're extinct, that means they, there's no longer any. Of these okay. animals around, so hopefully they won't become extinct. If they're endangered, we have to try and do something to protect Indeed. them. Okay. Um. So wow, three very interesting animals. So the brown bear, the lynx, and the imperial eagle. Have you ever yes. seen any of these animals yourself? Yes. Oh wow, that's amazing. But, uh, in a in a zoo, <laughs> they have them. So, in captivity? They, yeah, in captivity, exactly. Yes. And what do they do? Are they is part of the reason for their captivity to help breed them again or is it just to show them to visitors? I think it's just uh, to show them for visitors, and sadly. <laughs> yeah, I know that some places have captive they breed them in captivity to try and keep the yes. numbers up or whatever. But it's a big effort and sometimes quite tricky because animals yes, so don't do I don't well. like I don't like the zoos, but when I was young, I, I used to go with my parents on with the school, so I saw them. <laughs> yeah, sure. 
Um, zoos are an interesting topic, actually. We'll talk about those again later if we have time, because, um, you know, some people hate them, some people think they're a good idea. Interesting, um, bit of a controversial issue. But all right, very interesting. Thank you, Estella. Those three are very fascinating, very different animals, so awesome. Um, welcome. Let's say hello also to Edson. Hello, Edson. Hi. How are you today? Fine and you. I'm well, thank you. So, Edson, same question for you. Well, I used to have animals like dog and cat as well. Before I moving uh, moving to a, an apartment, that I'm mm -hmm. living in an apartment now. But I used to have just one one dog and one cat. It was mm -hmm. pretty terrible the the the, the, the life between them between them because. Mm -hmm. They just used to like attack one each other, you know. <laughs> oh no! So they didn't play happily like Estella's rabbit and dogs. No. Oh. <laughs> oh dear, well, that must really have been stressful. Yeah, but nowadays I just when I go to my sister house, my sister has a dog, and then I the most part of time that I I am there I. Play, play with my with the dog and as well the, the my 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 nephew and nieces. Wonderful. They like dogs and I used to play with you with them and the dog as well. We play soccer, <laughs> ball. Really? Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really really funny, really good. So you you got to have the fun part, but you didn't actually have to do the boring stuff like look after it because you could just go home be like bye. See you guys next time. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because it's kind of <laughs> a lot of you know, mid time is kind of boring. You know. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come good on, good bye -bye. technique, Edson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but... All right. So you don't have any pets yourself. No, 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 no. Actually, I don't like it as well because you know. Dogs at home is complicated, you know, I know, because you need to take care of it and you need to provide food, you need to make him take a shower, you need to clean the, the dog and the stuff and just go my my friend's, my sister's house and that's it, just a little, <laughs> a little play and there's enough. Go yeah, home absolutely. and that's it. Definitely. I, I have respect for your choice, Edson. <laughs> All right. Well, it's lovely to see you, and welcome to you as well. And last but certainly not least, Anna, how are you today? I am I'm fine, thank you. All right. So tell us about animals in your life, Anna, if any. I, I used to spend vacations at my parents' farms, and each time I would go on vacation, I would have a different pet. I I had to raise it an ocelot, um, um, a calf. You know, some pets I I used to have a a lamb. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a small sheep. In well, here in my country, we have a lot of animals that are endangered. And unfortunately, some of them are at the verge of e extinction, such as uh, tamarins, the the gold fa golden face lion tamarind, a mm -hmm. uh, way of turtles, uh, great felines, and some predatory birds, and and so forth. And <clears throat> I believe that uh, the the biggest uh, Problem: the most lethal cause of extinction is the introduction of competing species. But okay. uh, people don't know that uh, they brought the giant African snail to mm -hmm. to Brazil, and it is a plague now. Mm -hmm. a, a plague now, and a you pest. know, and a pest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In in the destruction of their habitats and and also hunting, but I believe hunting is not the 
the biggest problem here. Mm. But we have also animals, you know, the, in the Amazon rainforest, the pink dolphin. Absolutely. I think you have some really, really special, unique animals. Um, I often do classes on animals with my younger kids, and they, they know some crazy animals that I've never heard of, and a lot of them are from the Amazon. So it's this really special place. Brazilians, you are so lucky. Um, all right, let's have a look and read some of this article. Um, I'll share the link with you. Let's just do that. Um, and basically, well, we're just going to find out what happens in this. So we'll go back to Raphael. Raphael, could you read the title and that little intro for us, please? Um, are you listening okay? Um, it's a little bit noisy. Okay, let me try to fix it. Okay, could you skip this time? I I change right. the settings. We'll come back to you, Raphael. Let's go to Martin. Could you start us off, please, Martin? The man who inspired Charles Darwin, do Charles Waterson philosophies of protecting all animals, even those that are feared or seen as less useful, still work in modern Canada, in modern day Canada, 150 years after his death. Great. And we'll just scroll down. And if you could carry on, please. Yeah. Most people have never heard of Charles Waterson but the conservation pioneer is credited with both inspiring Charles Darwin to travel to South America, where the famous naturalist would later develop his theory of evolution, and constructing the world's first nature preserve, a move that radically shifted 19th century attitudes when animals were more often feared and exploited. Thank you. Beautiful reading, as always. Um, does anyone have any questions before we carry on about those first little pieces? No? All right. Um, that's a shot of this conservationist's namesake park, which looks absolutely stunning, I must say. Um, all right. And Natasha, could you carry on for us in light of? Uh, okay. Uh, in light of recent debates between conservations, hunters, and the general public on uh, how to best preserve and protect the dwindling animal populations, I stopped by Water, uh, uh, Waterton Lakes National Park in Alberta, Canada, uh, where the conservation's namesake park is betting with a bear population that's encroaching upon nearby towns, farms, and ranches. Nearly 150 years after his death, and 10 years after grizzly bear hunts were suspended in WLNP, I wanted to see if water Tone's uh, philosophies of protecting all animals, even those that are feared or seen as less useful, still worked in a place where the uh, wildlife has gotten too uh, populous for the protected area. Thank you, Natasha. Lovely reading from you too. This this one's pronounced bear. Bam. Yeah, or bear, if you want to use an American accent, but not beer, because that's the drink, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, um, questions? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, go ahead. No problem. Uh, thank you, Ivana, gentlemen. Uh, encroaching upon. Okay, good question. What does encroaching upon mean? Anyone know? Evade. Yeah, say. it's like invading. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like invading, but in a in a slow way, gent sort of gently or quietly creeping, and overtaking some territory. It's not like marching in or anything. But yeah, good one. Any? What was the other question, Julian? Was uh, it the same? Yeah. No, I, I don't understand this sentence. Uh, even those that are feared or seen as less useful. Okay, good question. Here, so can anyone yeah. explain that? Uh, may I try? <coughs> uh, despite the fact that uh, people are afraid of 
of them and and think they 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 are not worth it. Yeah, they're not worth saving, they're not worth protecting. So thank you, Anna. So what it's saying, Julian, is um this guy who we're talking about, Charles, um, he worked to protect all animals. Um, it doesn't matter whether the animal is a bit scary or a bit, um, it doesn't help us in any way in human lives. He doesn't care. He still wants to protect them. Um, and now he's he's been dead for 100 years. This writer wants to find out if these, um, if his kind of attitude and what he started is carrying on or not. So everyone following, any other questions? Some really beautiful photos in this piece. Um, okay, so Ksenia, the largest. The largest of the three waterland lakes straddles the Canada-US border, meaning you can make up in Alberta, hike into Montana and be sick and be back in Canada for supper. Uh, we L N P isn't as famous or often visited as Banff. Canada's oldest national park just 380 kilometers to the north. But those who know it love it, with an affection usually reserved for hometown sport teams. Its two big biggest draws are wildflowers more than 1,000 vascular plant species grow hair and the bears. Excellent. Um, okay, anyone have any questions about this section? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Straddles? Straddles. Okay, good question. What does straddles mean? That means that uh, it is connected to both with US and Canada. Something which yeah. is. Uh, or you could also sit around on a, on a horse, your legs, when you're sitting on a horse, your legs are on both sides of the, of the horse. Yes, exactly. Right. It's straddling. That's a good a good um, analogy. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, it's like when you put one leg one side and one leg the other side. It's called straddling. Um, any other questions? No? All right. Um, let's keep going. It's Julian's turn. Okay, uh, I used uh, 505 is Q uh, square kilometers. Uh, WLMP is the smallest of Canada Rocky Mountain Parks. Yes, it, yet it is a home to between 40 and 80 black bears. Far more than the park's ecosystem can support. Canadian research Andrea Morehouse also found hair samples for 167 individual grizzlies and North American subspecies of the brown bear in the park and the surrounding areas. As a result, the animals have been seen venturing onto the plain where food is more abundant. In 2014, the Fish and Wildlife Enforcement Branch for Pension and Credit District, the, the area bordering the north end of WLMP recorded 52 incidents with grizzly bears, bears including <laughs> a, <laughs> a 17 prone livestock kills, two animals injured, and 21 instances of human conflict. <laughs> Great, thank you, Julie. And I noticed you're doing self-correction from beers to bears. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, okay, so um, any questions so far? Nope. Um, could somebody explain to me quickly just what's happened so far in this article? What do we know? What are we talking about? What are the problems? Nobody? Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead, Julie. Can I try? Yeah. Um, the, the problem is the um, relationship between the people near to the, uh, this reserve uh, uh, areas, 
and the animals that live in these areas because the animals don't know what is the borders. They mm -hmm. they walk or they try to to find um, food or 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 place to live. Yeah. But they don't understand the limits placed by the human people and yeah. uh, like animals when in some cases the animals have a, a different state <laughs> like humans maybe in sometimes I'm angry and sometimes I'm happy <laughs> and that makes the um, the that the um, in this uh, when when the, when the people uh, um, cross with the with the animals could be a fight or could be a, a incident between uh, um, the humans and the animals because maybe because the humans have a lot of fear and react in the wrong way or because the animals feels like the like like the humans are um, I don't say um, entering this territory and it's yeah. for for that it's very uh, important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, great uh, explanation, Julia. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just going to say that um, this is a little bit like what Martin was referring to at the beginning with the wolves um, around Jutland in Denmark, and I think this is something that happens in lots of different places. Um, so let's just keep going, we'll read a little bit more, and Jose, your turn. Okay. Visitors to the park are advised to carry with them a canister of beer spray, presumably cider, paper, spray that can com com convince even the most stop born of beer to leave you alone. But some children living near the national park even carry beer spray to school because walking from the front door to the school bus stop my me negotiating aggressively. Keep going. Places that we have gone bareback, reading as a kid. As a kid, I wouldn't send my kids big there because there are there are bears. Explain that Bechtel, a fourth generation rancher and president of the Water Tombi Research Association, an organization that, that has developed a carnivores and communities program to tackle tackle conflict in southwestern Alberta. Thank you, Jose. Um, all right, this one's cute. I thought this was funny when I read it before. A bear spray. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, let's keep going. Anna, Parks Canada. Are you there, Anna? Oh, yes, we have yes, two sorry. Annas. All right, go ahead, Anna. I'm sorry, you joined us late, so I didn't say hi to you, but hi and welcome. And if you'd like to read, you can read this paragraph for us. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Parks Canada Human Wildlife Contact Specialist John Stuart Smith has seen a shift towards tolerance of predators. Even up to 1940s, Park employees were encouraged to destroy predators to keep good wildlife. Now people come to the park to see predators, he said. Thank you, Anna. That was lovely reading. Any questions? No. No. All right. Let's continue. So we'll get the other Anna, if you could carry on for us, please, to get a sense. To get a sense of how, of how, sorry. WLNP's current strategies are working. I met up with local ranger and bear expert Charlie Russell, who explained that bears are not naturally violent towards people and that it's possible to live near these predators without fear. A bear that likes you won't hurt you, and I've tested that, he said. Keep going. I spotted my first broom, broom yeah. as, 
a cinnamon color black bear remaining <laughs> in long grass near the 14 kilometer Red Rock Parkway that cuts through the park. Similar in color to a grizzly, it selects the distinctive shoulder hump and dish shaped face of the bigger bigger bears, but seemed equally found of the protein rich roads of yellow yellow uh, I don't um had sorrow. I, I have no don't worry, Anna. That's a really scientific word. Don't worry too much. Keep going. Another grassland, please. Later that evening, I saw a darker colored grizzly lank and sling, like a teenager, slipping down the borders of a narrow river bank and crossing from one meadow to another. Well done. Great. That was a tricky one. This one here is rummaging. I have rummaging. I don't know the meaning. Can anyone explain what rummaging means? That's uh, animals who are just uh, running around in the area. Yes, it's not exactly running, Martin. More living in the area. Yeah, living. It's. I think rummaging kind of gives me the idea that they are like using their paws to explore. They're sort of sniffing around or, mm. you know, moving the grass or, I don't know, shuffling, eating, any kind of activity. Um, any other questions? Yes. Broom. Broom. Yeah, this is a type of a bear, Anna. A type of bear, a species. There's quite a few different ones mentioned. And this is also a species of plant, the one that you are struggling with. Any other questions? No? Has anyone here have ever seen a real life bear in the wild? Only in a cage. <laughs> that doesn't count, Kazenia. <laughs> but okay, you've seen one in a cage, which is, you know, still interesting. Oh no, I see on, on their um, road. Between uh -huh. the sitters, yes, I see. Oh wow! Okay, so they what what kind of bears are they? Do you know? I don't know, but it was not very big, like medium, like people are like person, not not bigger than not person. huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow! I've always found bears just so fascinating. I don't know why, but if you're interested, this seems like a really great place to go because it seems like they're everywhere. Um, let's just see if Raphael's sorted out his problem. How are you doing, Raphael? Hello, is it better now? Yeah, it is. Could you read for us? We'll go from while and all the way down to nearby. Okay. While the prairie landscape gave me an, an obstructed view of the bears, it also gives the animals a clear view of their food. Not all of it grass. I'm an 18 years old ranching next to Waterloo Lakes National Park. I didn't lose one cow to bears, but I saw them killing cows on my neighbor's property, Russell said. To help farmers living, living near WLMP absorb the cost of living with apex predators, the Alberta government, the Alberta government compensates for livestock killed by bears. Although some farmers complain it is too little, too hard to get. Currently, compensation comes from funds collected for hunting and fishing licenses. Although some ranchers have suggested all of their taxpayers, taxpayers should contrib contribute to the coast, since many of the bears seen in the national park live part of their lives on the farms and ranches nearby. Great. Thanks, Raphael. Stunning reading. Um, any questions? No? Okay, let's carry on because we are almost finished. Um, Martin, would you care to read a little bit more? I pondered my willingness to pay as I strolled through Waterton Town and I stopped puzzled when I passed a golf cart occupied by two border collies 
wearing reflective orange vests. They sat quietly near a sign reading, Help keep the wild in white life. The dogs chase deer out of town before they give birth because mama deer are very aggressive. A woman explained, The deer also attract cougars, so keeping them away prevents another human wildlife conflict. Keep going. It seemed, it seemed 150 years after his death, Charles Waterton's philosophy of protecting predators was still in vogue, even though his practice of putting fences around wildlife no longer worked. Instead, I saw humans and wildlife learning to coexist with deer herding dogs and bear bear savvy, savvy school children. People were building on the concepts of Charles Waterton, protecting creatures for their own value, while modifying them for a different era, for a different era. And the proof it was working was being able to watch a bear going about his business without fear on my part of all the bears. Great. Thank you very much for finishing that off for us, Martin. Does anyone have any questions about the last two paragraphs? A cougar is a mountain lion, and I believe it's the same as a lynx, just another name. It might be different. Someone could maybe look that up. Any a other cougar. questions? A ah, cougar. cougar. Yeah. Mm. It's a bit of a, a confusion about all those species. I know that another name for cougar is a mountain lion, so it may be the same as a puma and a lynx. Who knows? Um, does anyone have any other questions about this last little part? No? All right, so we managed to finish um, reading. What do you guys think about how successful these people in Canada are with this, this policy of protecting the bears? How do you think they're dealing with it? Well, badly? Would you mind living there? Anyone like to comment before we finish? I think they're doing very well with animals there, so I wouldn't mind living there, I suppose. I think, yeah, Martin, good point. It seems like with bears, you can have bear spray, um, which is really a, quite a cool idea, and it protects you and the bear. I'm thinking with wolves, this wouldn't work so well. <laughs> Wolf spray? <laughs> um, by the time you got the spray out your bag, it might be too late. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, I think it's a really inspiring example of how we people are managing to live with, with really dangerous wild animals and not kill each other. Um, it's not perfect. I'm sure that the farmers get annoyed. But maybe it's better than, than other places in the world where it's a real struggle. So thank you, all of you, for participating. It was lovely to see you. Maybe see you later on again in the week. If not, have a good weekend. See you guys later. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 B